Let every heart say man. Come on, let every heart say man. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, just one more time. Just one more time. Just one more time. Come on, give the Lord a praise in this place. Come on, I had his right. He, he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Somebody lift your hand in the sanctuary. I said, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're victorious. Hallelujah. 
Now turn to a neighbor, let the writer say, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do. But I come to clap my hand. I come to do my dance. I come to give him glory. I come to tell my story. I don't know what you come to do. But I don't know what you come to do. But I come to run, dance, whatever I got to do to make sure God gets his glory. Can we have a little church in here? Y'all ain't said nothing. Can we have a little church in here today? Put your hand together as our choir takes us higher. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give God a good hand clap. Oh! 
Come on, we need to go back and get that Holy Ghost power. She said the preachers don't preach like they used to preach. The deacons don't pray like they used to pray. The people don't love like they used to love. We need to go back. I said we need to go back. We need to go back. Yeah. Down on your knees. Yeah. Yeah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody glad this morning? I know your new year might not have started off like you wanted to start. But anybody can say, I still got joy. I still got a praise. I still got a hallelujah. I'm going back. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 The spirit of the living God is here. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know about nobody else. That's the time when you get what you need from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Whatever it is you desire from the Lord, it's in the room right now. Y'all mind that we go to the Lord in prayer? Hallelujah. Come on down now. I need the Call on his name, Reverend Jones. Come at this time. It's a good time to park ourselves before the altar of God. It just says there was power in the blood. There's power in his presence. And so today. You are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the power of their will. Won't you come? Whatever problem, whatever situation, whatever doors that need to be opened, whatever ones that need to be shut, God can fix it. We trust in Him. Now, Father God, it's time of the morning. When every they seems some places to be okay. There's a spiritual battle going on. We standing at the front line. We don't know what the outcome's gonna be, but we trust in you. And we trust in your word that have told us this battle is not ours, but this battle is yours. We are confident, God, that we may not see the victory, but we trust that it's going to come to pass. Uh, we believe in your word, and we're not leaning on our own understanding, but we trust in you through faith that you deliver us too. Now, some stand for one thing, one stand for another. Uh, but you are awesome, God, and as we come in one accord, God, you can just speak the words of clarity, and everything becomes very clear. Very plain, very correct, and very done. God, we thank you. We thank you for this morning's arrival. Uh, we thank you for 
blessing us that we didn't have an accident on our way. That as we came, we came, or even that believing that when we leave here, we will be different than when we came. Every circumstances, Father, that's here in the minds of uh, the believer, and even those that may not be sure, you stand at the door, tell them that the victory is already won in Jesus Christ. Now, Father, we proclaim right now in unison that you are God and you're God all by yourself. We proclaim in unison, God, what you've done in the past, that what you're doing right now, and certainly what you will do in the future for those that trust and love you. We believe that the circumstances we see is not all that you have for us. And if I can just look back at your patriarch, they were saying that, yet I've been young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen a seed begging bread. God, you have blessed us abundantly. And oftentimes we stand in the baker shop and we cry for bread. Because we haven't understood the blessing that you bestowed on us. But as we give more, God, you will pour into us the spirit, oh God, that would enlighten us and embrace us, oh God, that we go on in spite of what it looked like. Knowing, oh God, that you're going to fix it like you fixed it in the past. Now bless everyone and every family represented here today. Let them understand and believe that it is, as we continue on, if we lay our trust in you, if we bring our problems before the altar of God, oh God, that you'll fix it. That you'll make all the rough roads plain. All the hills, oh God, you'll lay them out and all the valleys, oh God, you allow us to come through. We're grateful right now, Father, for what you've done in the life of New Home. We're grateful for what you've done in our personal life. I will pray this morning, oh God, that you enlighten the leadership, oh God, of New Home. Oh God, enlighten our pastors, oh God, have them see even clearer, oh God, the vision that you have in this life. Oh God, even all the circumstances that he faced, God, wipe them before him and make his road plain and straight and give him your will, oh God, before you. Let he continue on. Place around him, oh God, angels that will protect him in all avenues of life and through this ministry. Bless his family, oh God, and bless the family of our leaders today. Help them to be on one accord, oh God. For those of us that's not, not clear, that's difficult, oh God, that's carrying rocks. God, you said you have even rocks to cry out, oh God, to praise you. Let us drop them and bury hatches, oh God, that we not and want a card with, and we don't have the relationships that we need to have, even in our immediate family. God, I trust in you this morning. That you bring us together in love and harmony and peace, oh God. Trust in only you, oh God. Realize that even though the devil is constantly on our trail, God, you supersede circumstances. Intervene in life's problems, oh God. God, allow us to even sleep in the midst of warfare. Rest, oh God, knowing that the battle is not ours. Now, God, my prayer this morning is simply this. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing right now. And thank you, Father, what you'll do in the future. Let our trust be in only you, oh God. Let us build up one another in spite of. God, let us pray for one another in spite of. And God, let us bury, oh God, all the things of the past is not like you. That we can see only you. Give us the tunnel vision, God. Put blindness before our left and our right of our sight, oh God, in faith. That we the only can see your son, Jesus. Father, now all the ones that's in the sound of my voice, God, I pray this morning. That you make life clear, oh God. That we can see you and only you. That our circumstances don't overcome us. But through faith, we overcome our circumstances because of you. And what you have done and what you will do. Now, Lord, bless this church. Bless it, oh God, in such a way, oh God, that folks will be glad when they come and glad when they leave. That it be contagious, oh God, the spirit of your holiness, oh God, as you make it present among us. These blessings we ask in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Come on. Will you clap your hands? Do you believe it? Hallelujah. 
At this time, will you turn your attention to the screen for our new home news and announcements? Streaming now. This is New Home News. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to New Home Mount Meigs, the home where we embrace, empower, and employ. Take out your pen, your pad, or your phone so that you can stay connected because oh, no, no take takers are move are makers. Move makers. We're elated that you decided to join us today in service. Every Sunday, you have the opportunity to listen to us live on 96.5 at 7 a.m. Join us at our 8 a.m. service or 10 a.m. service. And now you can watch us on TV on The CW at 9 a.m. every Sunday. New Home Improvement is back in full swing. Join us weekly, Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. live on Facebook for our book study of I Believe by Tom S. Rayner. Before you come into the room, make sure you read chapter one, I Believe in the Bible. Our Next Steps New Members Orientation class begins Sunday, February 4th in the Fellowship Hall at 9 a.m. If you or someone you know has joined our church and hasn't participated in this course, sign up now. We look forward to seeing you. Hello, New Home family. My name is Michelle Peterson, and I come to you on behalf of the Outreach Ministry who will be conducting a hygiene drive for Hope Ministries. The drive will begin January 21st through February 15th here at the church. So if you have donations, you can leave them at the front. And the reason why we do what we do here at New Home Mount Mix, because we know, as in the Bible, it says in Hebrews 13, 16, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for the sacrifices are pleasing to God. So I hope to see you all in the front vestibule giving your donations. Thanks. Don't forget, immediately after service today, you can join Next Gen Pastor Joseph Thomas for a training session if you would like to serve in the youth ministry. Oh, come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. New Home Mount Megs and Friends present Sounds of the Church Concert Sunday, January 21st, 4 p.m. You don't want to miss this rocking good time. If you are celebrating a birthday in the month of January, please submit your full name, birth date, and a baby picture to New Home Social at gmail.com no later than January 24th. If you would like your 2023 contribution report, please sign up outside the finance department. Stay connected with us. We invite you to join our church community through various virtual spaces where we share inspiring content, announcements, and engage in meaningful conversations. Join us as you share your thoughts, participate in discussions, and experience the warmth of our church family from wherever you are. Stay connected, stay encouraged, and continue to be new home strong. This has been Daryl Rock. I'm Joseph Ken Spirit, and this has been New Home News. Have a blessed Sunday. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please stay connected with us on our Facebook and social media platforms for um, announcements and updates. Um, at this time, I do have one additional announcement. Um, we want to keep in prayer for Taquisha Davis um, and her family at this time. She was not in the announcements, as well as um, Sister Us Usen, Pastor? Pastor? Okay, um, it's one of our one of our members. The glory to God. 
Uh, Sister Usin, um, if, if you're here, you can correct me. Charge it to my head and not my heart, okay? Elorian, thank you. Come on, give God praise for him. Amen. Uh, they, she lost her uncle and her mother in the span of two days, and so uh, we want to keep, keep them in prayer. Let's just lift our hands in prayer for them right now. Father, we thank you for their lives that they lived here on this earth. God, we thank you for the family, Father, as they leave and they live out the legacy, Father. Give them strength during this time. Give them peace that surpasses all understanding. We count it done in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I said it was one announcement. I got another one. The boys, we had an awesome time at WWE last night. Yeah. We thank God. This is an impact of your giving, your faithfulness to this ministry. We were able to take the young men uh, to WWE, and they had an awesome time running past and not back and forth to the concession stands and screaming. And, um, but we enjoyed it, standing out in the cold for an hour just to get into the Coliseum. Um, but, but we enjoyed it, and we thank God for it. We're going to have more events as the next gen, uh, but this is just a kickoff of the new year. So can we give God praise for our young men one more time? Amen. At this time, we want to take a moment to um, greet one of our neighbors. This is our cyber evangelism time in our service. So if you would, greet your neighbor to the left and to the right of you. Go ahead and take out that phone. Take a picture with them. We want everybody to know that we're at New Home. Listen, if you're joining us online, we thank God for you. We thank you, God for you joining us. You can watch anywhere in the world, but you decided to worship with us, and so we thank God for you. Do us a favor, share the broadcast. Maybe your family couldn't make it to church this morning, but you can share the broadcast and they can join us. We would love for them to join us in service this morning. Are there any first-time visitors in the house of the Lord this morning? Any first-time visitors? Come on, new home, can we make our first-time visitors feel welcome? Hallelujah. Listen, first time visitors, if you would take out your phone for me, we want you to text the word embrace to 41372. Again, text the word embrace to 41372. We won't bother you. We won't text you all week. We just want to say thank you for worshiping with us and thank you for being a part of our family today on this good Sunday morning. New Home, can we thank God for our first time visitors one more time? Hallelujah. Well, we're going to continue in worship. Um, this is an opportunity where we all can give unto the Lord. If you have need for an envelope, you can lift your hands. Our ushers will come at this time with an envelope. If you want to partner with us in giving, you can do so via Givelify and Cash App. Cash App, dollar sign, New Home Strong, and Givelify, New Home Missionary Baptist Church. We can't give in the same quantity, but we can give in the same quality because God loves a what kind of giver? A cheerful giver. Put, on, put a smile on your face. And let's give unto the Lord. Jesus, 
for blessing me. Blessing me. I just want to praise you forever and ever. Come on, put your hand together. And ever for all. All you have done, you've done for me. I'm singing blessings and honor. They all, all belong to you. Yes, yeah, they do. Thank you for blessing me. I want to pray you forever and ever, ever and ever, all that you've done for me. How many know he's done so much for you? Come on, lift that hand. Give his name glory. I'm singing blessings and honor that you all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. For blessing me. Can we go one more time? Oh, forever, ever, and ever, forever, for all, all that you've done, you've done for below me. I'm singing blessing and glory. For everything, everything you've done for me, hey, I want to say thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I feel all right, y'all. Can we go just one more time? Yeah. Forever, forever and ever, ever, for all. All you have done, you've done so much for me. I'm singing blessings and glory and honor. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. The blessing for blessing me. Can anybody say he's blessing me for blessing me for blessing my children for blessing my family for blessing my finances for blessing my health thank you for blessing me I come to lift my hand I come to do my dance because you've been good to me hallelujah 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 lift your hand Lift your hand, repeat after me, Lord, Lord, with a cheerful heart, I sow my seed. Today, I plant it in good ground. I believe my needs are met and my family is blessed. I'm expecting, y'all didn't say it like you expecting. I'm expecting, y'all still ain't there yet. I'm expecting. A supernatural novice in Jesus' name, amen. with me. 
with me. God is not through with me yet. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. When God gets through with me, when God gets through with me, I shall come forth, I shall come forth as pure gold. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. with me God is not through with me yet Praise for the senior choir. 
Come on, y'all do better than that. Now, can you give God a great big hand clap of praise? Come on, open up your mouths and give God the best praise you can give up. Come on, I need the praises in the house. I need the folk that can open up their mouth and give God the best praise. If he been good to you, you ought to open your mouth. If he brought you from Sunday to Sunday, you ought to open up your mouth. We got to make sure the temperature right. Can you turn and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I didn't come to be cute today. I didn't come just to look good. If I got to sweat my makeup off, if I got to unzip my wig, I'm going to give God the best praise I can give him. I need at least 50 beautifully sun-kissed people to give God the best 10 seconds you can give him. Go ahead and give it to him. Give it to him. Open up your mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. John chapter 13. God is not through me yet. The Lord is blessing me right now, oh, right now. The Lord is blessing me right now, oh, right now. He woke me up. Y'all gonna help me have church? Started me, Blessing me right now, oh Lord. If he blessing you, say the Lord. Come on, help me. Is blessing me right about now, oh Lord. Yeah, the Lord is blessing me. Woo yeah, Lord. What did he do for you? Woke me up. Started me on my way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lord is blessing me. Oh, yeah. If my mama was here, she said like this. She said, he woke me early this morning. I was close. Clothed in my right mind. Oh, the Lord didn't didn't let me sleep too late. Oh, but he woke me, woke me right on time. Y'all help me. Oh, he woke. Come on. Started me. Yeah. The Lord is blessing me. Yeah. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. I gotta say my boys, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Said he woke me up. This started me on the Lord, the Lord. Is blessing me right now. John chapter 13, verse number one through five. If you got it, say whoop that is. If you need some time, say wait on me. Look at the screen. Amen. Pray God. John chapter 13, verse number one, reading from the English Standard Version. It says, Now before the feast of the Passover. When Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And so during supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray Jesus, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, he rose from supper. 
laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. And then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. I want you to do this for me. Just look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm, on I'm on my way. Find somebody else. Tell them, say, I'm on my way. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The grass withers, the flowers thereof fade. The word of the Lord shall stand forever. Father God, it's our prayer that you speak through your vessel. Allow me, Father God, to be played in your key, played at your pace. That your people will hear you and not me. Father God, it's my prayer that you would do what you've always done. Speak clearly so we may know you nearly. My simple and earnest prayer is less of Lee and more of thee. In the mighty name of Jesus, all of God's children ought to shout amen. 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 It was a blessing just a few days ago as I began to consider what it was that I should share with the church this morning. Uh, God literally told me that many of us are looking and searching for more. But the reality is, is we're looking and searching for more. More is wondering where we've been. Yeah, many of us, many of us are excited about the promises of God and we're waiting for them to fall into our lap. The promises are not uh, in a space where uh, they're coming slowly to us, but rather the promise is waiting on you to get where you're supposed to be. Bad grandma, good preaching. I need some help this morning. Uh, 11 o'clock crowd, 10 o'clock crowd, I need you to understand that God says legitimately the more that he has for you is literally texting you right now asking you, where are you? And at the end of this Somali presentation, you ought to be able to say, I'm on my way. Now, now let me tell you something about our culture of people that are beautifully sun kids. See, we love to holler we on our way when we ain't even got our clothes on yet. We love to holler we on our way when we ain't nowhere close to the street, ain't even put it in the GPS. But, but more is saying, where are you? Because more understands that if you're going to attain the more that God has for you, you got to prepare for the more that God already has for you. It's waiting on you to get yourself together. You're not waiting on it. It's waiting. I wish you just looked down your row because your neighbor already cut me off because I ain't got there where they want me to be. Just look down your row and tell them. It's waiting on you. It's waiting on you. And the question is, what are you going to do to get prepared for the blessings God has for you? Check this out, child of God. As we look at the discourse concerning John chapter 13, we find out that Jesus Christ is leaving earth. He is legitimately on the last leg of his ministry. And he takes the moment in time to teach his disciples a lesson that they seem to not have learned over three years of 365 days. It's a lesson that most of them still have not learned. Can I tell tell you this lesson ladies and gentlemen we cannot take lightly because it's the last lesson that Jesus Christ told them I don't know about you but if you ever lost a loved one if you ever had a great teacher if you've ever been in some place where you were learning the first lesson is good the second lesson might be great but that last lesson is the lesson that you got to make sure you pay attention to I believe this is serious family because this is the last lesson that Jesus teaches us and he's not telling them how to hold it and call it. He's not telling them how to get miracles. He's not telling them how to get a new Porsche and how to have money in your bank account. He's telling them that if you want a lot from me, you got to learn how to serve me more. I know it would get quiet in this Presbyterian church because black folk don't like the word serve, but can you look at your neighbor and give them a spiritual cuss word this morning and tell them serving the Lord will pay off after a while. At some point, you got to get off your tutti fruity and begin to serve like Lord said we always sung this song in the Baptist church said to serve this present age my calling to fulfill and the problem is child of God too many of us are serving but we serve in the old age I need you to come up a little further I need you to learn that God has new things that he needs you to do I know you've done some stuff before but when there's a new issue there ought to be a new solution and check this out as we climb into our text, what I love about this text is as he's teaching them about serving, he legitimately does so at the table. Uh, you know, you want to get some folk together, you make some Rotel deal here. 
Here it is. He, he, he makes some rotel dip. Some of y'all want shrimp. Some of y'all want koneka. I don't know what you want. But he makes some food, and it's the last supper, and he puts them at the table. And there's two things that I love about this table, Deacon uh, Durham, uh, Deacon Rollins. I found out, number one, uh, that while they were on their way to the table, the disciples were so worried about whose name would be called. They were so worried about who would have a title. They were so worried about who would sit at the right hand of the father and who would sit at the left hand of the father. They were walking in the church and they were so worried that if their name isn't called, they would not be there. And because they were so worried about stuff that did not matter, they did not take care of the thing that did matter. They came into the house of God where they would normally wash their dirty feet because you don't bring mess from outside inside of God's house. Lord have have mercy y'all quiet now because you shared it on Facebook but you ain't got to bring what's out there in here and child of God I love it because they walk in worried about the wrong stuff and they come to the table with dirty feet can I tell you the first thing I learned about this is that the table of God is spread and it is not a table that has exemptions you can come even with your dirty feet that's why some of y'all still here right now. Some of you walked in this morning and your feet dirty. But I got a word for you. God will clean your feet. Some of y'all ought to give God praise because the only reason you made it to church in the first place, the only reason you saved was because God didn't say your feet had to be clean before you got here. God took you how you were and cleaned you. I wish I had somebody up in here that'll stop acting so tooty fruity, stop acting so bougie and pompous and pious and be real. You was in the club before you made it to the church house. Some of y'all were there last night. Amen. Praise God. I come to tell you, it doesn't matter how you come, God will handle you and fix it when you get here. There are no exemptions at the table. This is good, family, because the problem with some of us is we're sitting on rows right now and we've had our nose in the air the entire time. Ah, uh, yeah, we sitting too close. Folk around me, they rubbing their ankles and the knees and the thighs and I just, uh, mm -mm, your nose way up in the air right now, but you got to be real because you did not always have it together. I need the real folk in the room. I was not always looking like I was looking. I know on my mama, on my hood, but I look fly and I look good, but I didn't always look like what I look I wish I had somebody that would just tell the truth I did not always look like this and so I thank God that he does not make exemptions he's a God who makes exceptions he led me to the table not because of me but in spite of me but check this out not only are there no exemptions at the table the one thing that I saw child of God is that there was no exposure at the table uh, uh, check this out check this out in this text on this Facebook account in this Twitter I did not see uh, Peter talking about Judas's feet being dirty Y'all come close. Y'all acting like y'all was on the slow bus. Get closer to me. Here it is. They're not talking about each other's feet, although all of their feet are dirty. I'm going to preach myself happy and then I'm going to run home by myself. I believe there's somebody in here who can testify. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So nobody should be talking about somebody else's sin because the feet are under the table. Nobody has nothing to say Lord have mercy I wish I had a church up in here full of folk that believed and remembered that before you were saved you were sinning just like other folk in the street oh y'all acting quiet on me matter of fact some of y'all still sinning right now and you ought to give God praise because you ain't perfect but ain't nobody running a mouth about your mess likewise you ought to be quiet about other folk mess Keep your opinions to yourself. Work out your own soul salvation. Check it out. He says there are no exemptions at the table. He says there's no exposure at the table. Nobody's telling on somebody else as if it's going to get them closer to heaven. Yeah. Nobody made you the spiritual police anyway. It's, it's necessary for you to close your mouth sometimes. And so he says, they're at the table. 
Now, let me set the scene. I wish I had a table here. Uh, if, if we look at this text, I, I'm, I'm a young man, about 35. I see everything like Disney. Here it is. They're sitting at the table. And Jesus Christ sees that there's an issue at the table. He gets up and he tends to the issue. I'm preaching and y'all don't hear me. When you see something, y'all to say something. When you say something, y'all to do something. And that's the problem with us is that we see it happening, but we don't say nothing. And then we talking, but we ain't walking. At some point, you got to realize you're the solution to some of life's problem. Okay. I wish I had a witness right here. I'm sweating early. <laughs> I like this because he tells us I saw dirty feet so there was something I had to do. We see the picture of Jesus Christ getting up to serve and the reality is family if we're going to be Christians we ought to be close to living like Christ. And so what Christ does is he gets up and he takes off his title and he picks up a towel. Lord have mercy. And he begins to wash the feet of the disciples. Now, now, it's interesting because what we learn from Jesus Christ is how we ought to serve. The first thing we learn, number one, is that he serves with no request. He didn't wait on the disciples to say, ooh, my feet dirty. He, he didn't wait on nobody to say, ooh, I need you to do this. He got up and he served because he saw something needed to be done. Yeah, Y'all get real quiet around here. Just nudge your neighbor and say, wake up. Child of God. You need to understand that God is calling us back to a place of service. Not just in the church house, but in the community. Not just in the community, but in your sphere of influence. At some point, uh, we got to stop acting like it ain't my business uh, and begin to serve where we know we can make a difference. I like this because Jesus Christ is there and he says, hey, man, I, I got to serve and I got to serve without anybody requesting me to serve. Facebookable for those who take notes. Here it is. You got to understand that your harvest is predicated on your humbleness. Everybody want more, but don't want to do more. Everybody want a new job, but don't want to uh, brush off the dust on their uh, resume. Everybody wants something for nothing. Uh, and we got to learn, child of God, that if you want more, you got to do more. And so he says, you got to learn how to do it without folk requesting you. Can, can I tell you what messes us up and why we need people to ask us stuff? It's because we think we all that in the bag of chips. Or we think we're too high to come down to do it. Y'all quiet. <laughs> I need some help this morning. I, I need you to get this. James chapter 4 verse number 6. It says something like this. God resists the proud. <laughs> if you read it in the Greek, resist would tell you uh, that it literally is a military, uh, uh, it's a military term. And it means that God stations an army there in front of those who are proud. What does that mean? Pastor Walker wants to tell you that what God says is if you're a prideful person and you're all haughty and high and mighty, God will do things uh, to stop you from progressing the way you want to progress because you're too busy getting the big head. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of big heads in the church house. There's a lot of people who get the big head and don't think they can serve real low. But I come to tell you, whether you got a title or not, every title means that you're in a higher level of lower servitude. So the higher you go in title, the more you ought to be willing to serve. And what we got to get together, church, is that God ain't God ain't got nothing for pride for people. He says, uh, pride comes before a fall, before destruction. The child of God is important for us to learn at the top of the year that if we truly want more, we got to serve more. Not get more titles. Not get more nods. We got to serve more. Check this out. I love this text because James 4 and 6 does not just stop there with saying God resists the pride, but it says, but God gives grace to the humble. 
and child of God, this particular conversation of grace in James chapter 4, number 6 is likened unto favor. And y'all know I like talking about favor because favor is God's hand in your life. God's hand on your life and God's hand over your life. What am I saying? It's the ability of God to provide for you when you did not deserve it. It's the ability of God to open doors for you when you did not have the credentials. It's the ability of God to bless everything you touch when your name ain't King Midas. I wish I had somebody who understood ain't nothing like God's favor. It'll drive you farther than your car can drive. It'll open more doors than your keys can open. Ain't nothing like God's favor low is the way and if you stay low enough long enough God will elevate you soon enough check this out ego the old pastor says stands for edging God out when you got a big ego you're pushing God out of the equation and if God ain't in it you won't be successful if God ain't in it, you will fail. And so it's interesting, family, that he says, literally, I serve with no request. Somebody in the back, let me tell you what uh, the Lord dropped on me this morning at 8 o'clock. He told me that you got to remind people uh, that this no request is also from the pastor. See, because some folk will do anything when the pastor asks them to. Yep, y'all say it just like, for you, pastor, I'll do it. But it ought not take the pastor to ask you to do nothing for you to do it. Because the last time I checked, the pastor did not wake you up this morning. The pastor did not start you on your way. The pastor did not make you food and he did not put clothes on your back. So if you can't do it for Jesus, you sure ought not do it for me. I wish I had at least a hundred folk in the room that'll say I do it. Because God has asked me to do it. Not because man asked me. Not because woman asked me. Not because the preacher asked me. Not because the deacon asked me. I do it because God called me to do sir with no request but then he says I serve with no restrictions if your Bible still open your apps unlock even if it's an Android I declare it anointed today the Lord is saying to us I wash the feet of all the disciples is your Bible open right there in the text he says, then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples, plural, feet. It's interesting, family, because the problem with some of us is that we'll serve, but we'll only serve certain people. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't like how she smiled at me. Child of God, there are three people in this world that all of us have to deal with it at some point or another. We have to deal with people who will, who will reciprocate what we give. We will have to deal with people who will only receive but never give back. And we'll have to deal with people who will reject what we give. I need y'all to be real with me. Uh, uh, can I be real this morning? Uh, um, uh, there's one person in that group that I'll only do something for about one time. Yeah, If you reject me one time, you ain't going to get nothing now another time. <laughs> I wish I had some witnesses that'll stop and throw your little high and holy halo off your head and be real in church on Sunday morning. You ain't got but one time to reject me. I ain't going to hang on you. You ain't going to get another one. And at some point in our lives, we'll all have to deal with folk that will reject what we give or serve. But that doesn't mean you stop serving. Okay, all right, all right, all right. We'll have to deal with people who will drain us of our resources because they'll receive everything we have, but they won't pour nothing back into us. And they'll drain you so bad, turn around and look at you like, why you ain't got no more? Hold on. All of us will have to deal with people who will reject what we do and people who will only receive what we do. But see, some of us are so selective, the only folk we want to deal with is people who give us reciprocity. I paid for your lunch this, this day, so you're going to pay for mine tomorrow. Can, can I tell you that's not really serving? Serving requires sacrifice. 
And it means sometimes you'll do for others and they won't do for you. Matter of fact, can I, can I rewind, press play, come back for another one? Serving sometimes means uh, that you'll help folk that'll turn around and hurt you. But you got to keep on serving and keep on serving. Because you ain't serving for them. You serving for, for him. I like it. I like it. I like it. Jesus served all of them. Yeah, yeah. He served all of the disciples. He, 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 he shows us the picture of what servanthood looks like because he served folk that would doubt him. He served folk that would deny him. He served folk that would lie to him. He served folk that would desert him. He served all of them. Judas turned around and betrayed them. Peter turned around and denied him. The other disciples left him on a cross to die all by himself, but he served all. I didn't get to touch this at 8 o'clock, but can I tell you why he didn't mind serving them? It's in the text. It says that he knew that his hour had come to depart. And he says, having loved his own until the point of death. It says that he didn't mind serving them ah, because he said the father had already given all things into his hands. He says, and that he had come from God and was going back. to. Can I tell you why you ought to serve folk in spite of their attitude? It's because they ain't give nothing to you and they sure can't take it away from you. Can, can I tell you why you ought to serve folk no matter what they say or look like? It's because God is the one who woke you up and they can't do nothing about it. They can't stop your favor. They can't block your blessings. Uh, so you ought to serve them anyhow because God ain't worried about what they do to you. He's worried about what you do to them. Somebody holler, serve, sir. Check it out. He says, you got to serve with no request. He says, you got to serve with no restrictions. My time is up. I got to go. He says, lastly, you got to serve with no reward. At no point in this text do you read that any of the disciples said thank you. And at no point in this text do you read that they put Jesus' name in flashing lights and call him the director of washing feet. You got to learn to serve with no reward. It's interesting because as I watched this washing of the feet in Sue, I thought about the term that my wife, first lady, T, uh, drug me up to the nail shop for my first pedicure. I don't know what she was saying. Maybe I scratched her at nighttime. But she took me to the nail shop. And as I was in there, they put my feet in some water. Brother Pilot, the water was slippery. I started moving my feet. The lady said, stop. No, 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 no. <laughs> water splashing everywhere. Her name was Sue. <laughs> some of y'all know Sue. Sue uh, got the water and she starts splashing on my leg and say, is it okay? Because she wanted to check the temperature of the water on my feet as I sat back in the recliner and I pressed the button and it began to give me, I don't know what type of massage it calls itself, shiatsu or some misubishi, one of those. And what I found out, family, was while it was giving me the massage, uh, uh, they brought me some communion juice. Somebody shout glory. <laughs> that the first time y'all came together today. <laughs> Sitting in the recliner, she's beginning to wash my feet and she pulls them out, she wipes my feet off and she begins to get this metal object. I don't know what it's called. I wanted to call it a cheese grater. <laughs> She start going at my feet, y'all, and stuff was flying everywhere. <laughs> As it was flying everywhere. I, <laughs> I ain't been back either, y'all. <laughs> I'm too goofy, y'all. Come on. 
so, so, so stuff flying everywhere and she began to put some oil on my feet and after she put the oil on my feet, she began to wash them off again and, and she began to wipe my feet off. It was a good wiping. She wiped in between my toes and I didn't even know it was skin in between now. <laughs> she wiped everywhere because she understood that a full washing of the feet includes washing and wiping. Check it out. She put some stuff on my, on my legs to exfoliate them, put the hot, warm towel on it, and then she began to just hit my legs. I don't know what she was doing, y'all, but it sure felt good to me. <laughs> and when she got done, I walked out of the salon, and I felt like I was walking on cloud nine. I don't know who I'm talking to, but when you really serve somebody... You ought to be able to take their burdens off of them and they become lighter because you serve. Look at somebody say serve, 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 serve. Well, before I walked out, I turned to Sue and I said, thank you. Sue smiled and she said, anytime, anytime. Because child of God, Sue taught me some powerful lessons. She taught me that even when you serve, it might be dirty. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Y'all acting like y'all ain't got no dry skin on your feet. Sue did it even though it was too much. It looked like she was wiping her eyes like something went for her eye. But she stayed down there and she served right where she was. But not only did Sue teach me that sometimes it'll be dirty, Sue also taught me that even when it is dirty, you still got to do it with enthusiasm. She had the biggest smile on her face I ever did see while she cleaned my feet. And child of God, it's important for us to learn that when we're serving, we ought to serve the Lord with gladness. We ought not have mean looking ushers and, and, and attitude having folk in service. At some point, uh, you ought to put a smile on your face or sit down and not be one that's serving. All I came to tell you is serving the Lord will pay up after a while. And I got to leave you now, but I want to read this scripture to you. Because Matthew chapter 6, verse number 1 through 4. It begins to tell us what the Lord had to say about serving. And I hope y'all can help me press on now. He says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house. No, that's the wrong chapter. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, verse number 1 through 4. I love it. He says simply that you got to learn that even when you're serving, that you got to be careful about how you serve. I love it. Look at somebody and say, how you serve. Tell them, say, you got to be careful uh, about how you serve. Uh, the Bible says, uh, he said, beware of practicing your own righteousness before other people. He says, because in order to be seen by folk, uh, you can't practice just so you can be seen. But he says, for then you will have no reward. Uh, he said that if you want to be seen, you'll have no reward from your father who's in heaven. But verse number two, he says, but when you give to the needy, you don't have to sound a trumpet before you uh, as the hypocrites do uh, in the synagogues and in the streets uh, that they may be, that they may be praised by others. Uh, but rather he says truly I say to you uh, is that if you want recommendations and high fives from people uh, then you gain your reward uh, but he says when you give to the needy you don't have to let your left hand know what your right hand is doing uh, so that your giving may uh, be done in secret uh, and he said when you do it in secret uh, I'll reward you publicly uh, I need y'all to help me through here uh, nudge one of your neighbors uh, and and say neighbor whatever you do don't serve don't serve to be seen but serve because God called you to it I don't know who I'm talking to come on I don't know who I'm talking to but I gotta encourage
somebody now uh, who's been serving the Lord uh, for a long time. Uh, and the truth is today, uh, you're getting a little tired. Uh, I need to encourage you. Uh, you got to serve uh, no matter how it feels. Uh, you got to serve uh, no matter if your name is called. Uh, you got to serve uh, no matter if your name is in flash and lights. Uh, because serving the Lord, uh, y'all help me like my mama told me, will pay off uh, after a while. Uh, y'all ain't nudge nobody. Uh, can you nudge somebody? Uh, I said nudge them. Uh, y'all stop being hard-headed and nudge them uh, and say, neighbor, uh, keep on serving. Uh, because when you serve, uh, the Lord will uh, He'll answer your prayers uh, when you serve. Uh, the Lord will. Uh, he'll pay your bills uh, when you serve. Uh, the Lord will. Uh, he'll give you favor. Uh, is there anybody here today uh, that can testify and say, uh, "I've been serving Him, uh, and since I've been serving, uh, everything. Lord have mercy, everything." Uh, has been all right. I need to encourage one more person before I get to my seat and we open the doors of church. I need you. I need you to get this today. I know serving will make you weary. I know serving will make you sad. I know serving requires sacrifice, but be not weary in well doing. For in due season, I said in due season, I said in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. Is there anybody here that's been serving the Lord? I need y'all to help me now. Jump to your feet, lift up holy hands, and look at somebody and say it's due season. I shall reap what I've sown. I shall reap what I've sown and uh, I gotta tell somebody uh, as I get up out of here uh, that every now and then uh, you deal with saints uh, who say they love the Lord uh, but they mean and serve uh, you deal with saints uh, who say they born again uh, but they acting a whole fool uh, and you gotta serve them uh, in spite of them uh, because God uh, is looking at you uh, and I gotta tell you one word uh, it shouts me every time uh, every time I say this word uh, God said be not dismayed whatever 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 be the time uh, God will take care of you I wish I had a witness now uh, that can shout he will uh, he'll take care of you maybe y'all over here and you can shout he will he'll take care of you if you know he will you ought to open up your mouth you ought to give god a praise because when you serve he will take care of you give god a praise i'm done Look at somebody and say, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. More. You're not. And there's somebody here who has a decision to make. You've been toiling all year long about where you ought to be. I come to tell you, this is a great church that will accept you for who you are. We will embrace you wherever you are. We will empower you with the word of God. And we will employ you to do the works of God. I don't know who I'm talking to. Look down your row and say, are you saved? Are you saved? Are you saved? What did they say? What did they say? If they said no, you need to bring them to the altar. Look down your row. Ask them, are you connected to a church home? If they said no, you need to bring them to the altar. Don't let this year be like last year. Make the decision today. Get to know him. Come on, help me. Right now, right now so they just come. There's nothing better to say, nothing better than knowing Jesus. He, he will pick you up and turn your life around. You ought to know him. Don't wait for tomorrow. Come 
on, help me. There's nothing better to say. Go him. Get to know him. Next Sunday, but today just come.